Thanks everyone for joining us on the Friday. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Forkey, uh, the uh, one of the founders of a company called Real Growth. Uh, at Real Growth, we help companies um, build their database, build their pipeline, help them with their branding. Also, the co-founder of a company called Nurture, which is a simple software tool that allows agents to uh, nurture their device, send out text messages. I'll tell you a little bit about that down the track. But today, I'm excited because I've got Johnny here with me for a really quick, short 20 minute hour session on prospecting. So thanks, Johnny. Thanks for joining us. Here's your mate. Good to be here. Awesome, man. So like I said, you're going to create a game. Let's just dive straight into it. I think there's people on this call that already know who you are. So we won't dive too much into uh, the back your background. But Johnny, where did you first kind of get started in real estate? And what did you do to build your database? Like what were you doing as you you know, someone who's fresh, you said, I think you said to me, you knew some, someone, you knew three people were at home. So yeah. where did you get started and how did, they get, how did it all start? Yeah, so seven and a half years ago, so I was uh, 23 or 24, I came out of uni. So basically, I had just scraped the bottom of the barrel. So I didn't have any work, didn't know anyone. I knew um, I knew three people, my, my sister, my rugby coach, and my brother. Um, and I called them all about three times each. In my first week of real estate, I didn't get a listing. And I thought, man, this is going to be hard work, a lot harder than I thought. So um, I, I I made it for probably took me a year fumbling around figuring out what to do. But I basically reached out to probably the 10 top agents in Australasia. Um, and there was one common denominator that they, they I just gave the feedback on, which was build more relationships, nurture more relationships um, over a sustained period of time. So I made sort of a, a two-year plan to do that. And then my business probably started flourishing probably three or four years after doing that. Um, I was making some money along the way to get by, but it really, I don't know, it's been probably three, four years on. So I tried to treat it like a university degree in that sense. So what I did is I bought a database of 35,000 people for about $1,000. They were landmines at the time. Um, and I, I was I was calling, it was cold part data. So I'm basically, because I didn't have any listings, I didn't have any sales, I'd find a listing at sale in the area I was calling. Um, it would be a half course listing in sale. So I would say us or, or ours. And I would simply call them. My dialogue would go something along the lines of this. I was trying to remember this and ask this question. But I'd say, hi, it's Johnny Nichols calling from Mark Books. The point of my call, and I was just calling to see if your friend, or, I'd, sorry, I'd say, we've just sold 23 Smith Street. We've just listed 26 Smith Street. The point of my call is, I just wanted to call, let you know that data, just check in and see if anyone, your friends, your family, your colleagues, there's a lot of that transacting over the next two years in real estate. And then I'll just go silent. And so did one of the things. Firstly, it showed I was human. And then I was like, I'm sorry to call you out the blue. Obviously, it was, it was tough making those calls. So let that facade down. Um, I'd find out if then their family or their colleagues or the sphere of influence were selling. And also, I'd give it a couple of years. Because often they'd say, oh, yeah, my neighbours talked about selling at the end of each year. But if I hadn't asked, asked, the, asked the question like that, then perhaps I wouldn't have got that response. And so for every every 30 people I was speaking with, I was finding one link. And a lead with someone selling within two years. And I built a database up like Chase List, which is two year sellers. Um, and I just tried to do that every week. And I did that each day. I'd find one or two a day. And I did that for probably about 80 months. And then again, my business just started to flourish. How many calls were you making a day just to give people a bit of insight into you know, the level of uh, output you're doing? Uh, on average, between 100 and 150 dial numbers. Which was probably about fifty each, like fifty conversations. Sometimes there's probably as high as seventy conversations. Um, I'm literally, I just lock myself in one of these call rooms, like where we are now, or I'd get in the car, I'd just go down and drive on this, um, drive it the side of the road, um, park up, and I just dial numbers because I, I had nothing else to do. So I thought the point of that I was to obviously build relationships, nurture relationships, and get listing appointments. Um, and I was doing a few buy appointments on the side, right? I was calling to book appointments and get relationships. And so if I didn't have those those uh, appointments scheduled in my, my day, then obviously I'll just make phone calls literally all day, basically from eight to eight. So just to, just to go back on that, so you're just saying you bought a database on landlines and you just started calling and just updating them of what was selling or recently listed in the area um, relative to them and then asking me, I, do they know of anyone looking to transact real estate in the next three years? Is that correct? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. So I had no, I had no data, I had no relationships. So if that's the case, you you do have to start cold. You know, I, I had no one else to call. So I was calling. Um, 
and I knew if I was calling, I, and I did this for a year or two, that come two years time, that business, my listings, my relationships would be a reflection of what I'm doing today. But the beauty is, is because I was doing volume, I was picking up business pretty quickly along the way. It probably took me two or three months and I was, I was getting listings, which was good. Got it, yeah. got it. And so as you continue to get that over those 18 months, what, what are you doing? Uh, what we else were you doing from a prospecting point of view and what are you doing today um, that allows you to continue to build and nurture those relationships? Like what types of activities make up your week from a prospecting and relationship building point of view? Yeah, I guess the, the point of that was to build relationships, nurture relationships and get listings. Now that I'm sort of, we rated we with sort of 15 to 25 listings at a time. So the biggest thing for us now is that we've got more data, right? We list the property, you, you end up with 20 properties, I'll download 20 through the property, 20 phone inquiries. So there's 60 people, you know? So I guess what our biggest goal this year is my business is probably about 75% repeat and referral. Um, and I look back to, you know, my last 100 deals where those buyers came from, you know, 75% of them came from there. So our goal this year is to get back to these basics again and grow that data and um, create another chase list. Um, but that's essentially where I'm, I'm growing my business this year is prospecting within the business or from existing clients and existing inquiries. So, for example, be like someone just called me five minutes uh, earlier and um, I said, hey, what's the price guide on Harry L? I said, it's 900000 So just hanging up and saying, have a good day. I said, what's your situation? And they, they, just rattle, they just rattle off a few bits and pieces. And I think that's the biggest thing is actually taking a couple of minutes on the phone when someone inquires to find out, hey, have you sold an existing property? Are you, every property I'll have dialogue. So for that one, it's um, it's about a million dollars, slightly bigger than the average property. So I'll say, hey, are you exist are you upsizing for an existing property you own? And I'll just shut my mouth. And that genuinely opens up a, a really good conversation. Just take a bit more time on the phone. That's probably our biggest thing in terms of prospecting. And then now I'm trying to do more in terms of newsletters, in terms of the billboard on all our staff. Um, social media, doing $100 per just sold post, for example, um, getting $250 for all our just listed posts. So social media calls and actually profiling out in the marketplace are our biggest areas of prospecting or breeding from what I've been with. But yeah, yeah it makes complete sense. It's interesting you, you say that because we were uh, looking at houses and uh, I would call up about a property and say, you know, what are, we, what, are, what are you looking like price wise? What are they, what is the vendors expecting? And I'd be like, oh, you know, just, you know, around 650 or whatever. And then they hang up. Mm. We had to sell a house as well, but they never asked the question. Yeah. So we're saying, ask the question, right? Ask the question, what's your situation? Get people talking. Yeah. That's, that's the best thing. And so for us, like I said to Connor the other day, they would be me as an agent. Like rather than making, we don't need to make 150 phone calls a day anymore. What? We've got really good quality data. So if we can dial 50 numbers, have really good, well-rounded conversations and find out why they're transacting and if they have something to sell and building our data that way, again, three to six, nine months time will be this phenomenal data. So it's just um, it's trying to utilize that sort of area of the business to build more prospect, um, prospecting, but uh, ultimately more listings as well. Yeah. So what does the, so, so now someone's in your database, what does that look like uh, from a, keeping in touch with them point of view, like what type of touch points are you having with those people already on your database? Well, what was the plan look like? Yeah, so it depends what category you're in. So I've got I've got only a few categories. So I've got past and present clients. So that's just a yearly phone call. They get a monthly newsletter. They get a bucket of cookies at, at Christmas time. And it's just a yearly check-in. But even though it's only nearly 12 months, they're getting, they're getting four, four touch points throughout the year. Um, so that's really important. Those conversations are awesome. Conversations are best probably early in the year just give them a market forecast so we've just done that for their past and present clients um we've got our chase list these are people who say i need you to know i'm being i call you back on a sunday night and you've got something to sell in two years time you're not working with an agent you're not ready for an appraisal uh but i put you in that chase list because i'm chasing you to get my, in your, my, my get you in my appraisal list um then there's the the appraisal list so obviously we're keeping in touch with those people for that they've had those sales data and bits and pieces but from those groups that's what the past and present are getting chase list they're getting quarterly reports we call them so every 10 to 12 weeks we just send out a um a hard copy um and it's got all the sales within 500 meters of their home and just trying to add value to them follow up with a phone call 
uh, and then trying to get the door to add them to the next, I guess, category in our database, which is appraisals face to face. So they're our, they're our three areas. Um, obviously, we're using nurture uh, in terms of added value and um, not even creating data, but cleaning the data. But it's just trying to add as much value as possible um, to those people, which is generally, generally sales. If they're they own a property, and especially if they're looking at transacting in the next two years, they they love data, those people. They love data. Everyone loves to talk residential real estate. It's probably just how you get in the door or how you get them in your mailing list that's really important. Got it. And so what does a quarterly report look like? So as you said, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of recent sales in, in their area, and you mail it to them, and then and you've got yourself or your PA or someone's just kind of putting that together. It's a bit of a template. You send it out as a letter and then you follow up the phone call, what, three or four days later? Is that how it works? Yeah, exactly. Generally, we're allowed to two to three business days for it to arrive to the individual. And then we'll follow up the phone call. Hey, did you get the report? Um, is there anything of value of there? Um, hey, did you, want a, did you want a more exact report in terms of numbers on your property? It takes 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, absolutely no pressure. Just thought it would be of value. Something, something simple. Um, you know, no pressure attached. And you're not obliging, but uh, that's, the, that's the way we structure it, yeah. Oh yeah, so the quarterly report, the intention there isn't are you looking at less, but it's more to get their the appraisal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's ultimately it is. I guess initially it's to strengthen the relationship, to add as much value as possible. And then in two, you know, you're you know, essentially the agent before they need an agent, which is always really, really important for us. So we're trying to gather as much data and as much value as possible, and then we know those those leads will come. Um, getting the data is probably the hardest part and getting permission to contact them is probably the hardest part so for us like I'll just do it might be like over own callbacks uh, no they're not interested in the property um, that's cool um, just very quickly you have a size of an existing property you own here we are no worries hey look absolutely no pressure but every 10 weeks we see that actually sales in your area um, within 500 metres of your home is there something you'd be able to receive it and I reckon probably 9 out of 10 say yes and I can say, oh, just need to get a name, number, um, email, and your address, please. Um, and make sure both parties are on that address. And then you've got there, you've got all their contact details. It was really, really thick data. Because we had, what I love about nurture too, not only are we eating data, and we give them the nurture option, by the way, because some people like text messages, some people really like hard copy. Um, and we're cleaning our data because we've had a lot of lot of fat data rather than fat data in our database. It's becoming a lot, a lot more clean now. Got yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I love that dialogue, and uh, you know, if, if people want to rewatch that, that's a great redialogue to 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 say on your uh, open road callbacks. It's a no brainer, even if you're a new agent starting out, then and, and you're just working buyers or another agent. Conversations can help build your database as well. Yeah, big time. So I'll sit down and do my callbacks, and ultimately you need to sell the high product. The high product is you want to get business or business. So I'll find out if there's any interest in the home. Um, and then I'll just just copy up that dialogue, and you can vary that dialogue. You know, you've got existing house to sell, you up existing existing house. Have you already sold your home? However, you want to word it. Anyway, I'll just put PV potential vendor, and I just say that I'm going to call you back on Thursday after the auction, just let you know what to sell for. And they go, yeah, fantastic. And then generally, I'll try and get the information there. But if not, it's an opportunity to follow them up um, and show you a bit of productive as well. That makes that makes complete sense. And so. Over the over your like the years you've been in, in real estate, you've you've seen um, a lot of perhaps mis- you've probably made a lot of mistakes along the way, but also probably seen a lot of agents make mistakes in terms of when prospecting. What would you say are some of the biggest, most common mistakes you see agents make when it comes to prospecting and things like that? Yeah, it sounds cliche, but the biggest mistake people make is being consistent and being consistent with their prospecting. Sitting down on a Sunday night saying, I'm going to make 100 calls this week, you know, making 50 on a Monday, but like, oh, okay, I'm going to go home now. I'll be dealt with Tuesday. Then you do, you know, only 25% on a Tuesday, and you go, oh, I'll be triple Wednesday. That's hands down the biggest mistake I see is people just being inconsistent with their prospecting. They, they lack structure, they lack discipline, but they lack clarity. So I'd say you want to get a lot of structure in place. The other biggest mistake I made, which not many people talk about in my first year, is I didn't actually create the database system to filter people who I connected with through to a database system and then have a system to manage them. Um, so I talk about systems, right? So for us at the start, I was making 100 calls a day for probably the first six months and they had something to sell and I wasn't database. 
So that's probably the biggest thing too. How often do we have an amazing conversation, a brilliant meeting, um, we go and appraise it, we're like, that, that's my listing. And then four months later, it pops up with a, a total room to sign order, a my hero sign board, or whoever you work for, the old the, the competition. And you're like, well, I deserve that listing. It's like, well, no, you did it because you made the touch point, you didn't have value across those four months and therefore you're not there. So that'd be the two, there's many things, but that'd be the two biggest things I see. Right, yeah. inconsistency and then just not managing the data correctly. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you could be structured with clarity uh, and create a system and be disciplined in terms of actually showing up every day and just doing that, then that's, that's hands down probably the biggest thing I see. And so what what was your what's your key to being consistent? Like how do you remain so disciplined and consistent? Like just to give people a bit of a uh snapshot, like I, I feel like Johnny, you you time block quite well and like someone's trying to get hold of you, you just gonna just you just you're out, you're making your calls and you're not answering it for, for that period of time because you're in the zone and you're making your calls. Is that how you kind of structure your day? Yeah, you've probably got frustrated with me before when you call, haven't you? Yo, I just say I could play treat it like I treat it like a meeting, right? So in this call room, if I've got that hour slot where I've, I've booked out, you know, one, two, three hours, however it looks, if someone calls me, uh, it's not to do with the prospect, I'll say, sorry, I need it before you act it because I, I treat it like a meeting. So um, how do I stay disciplined? I think because I've seen the highs and lows of real estate over seven and a half years, and I had to talk to our grades on Monday, I said, if I can teach you one thing, if you could take one thing, from this chat today, I said, please, listen to me when I say, everyone has this whimsical start to real estate, but if you can be consistent on the phones, be great structure, have real clarity about what you want to achieve, I think, I think that's a big problem is people don't plan the day before, they come in, they fail to plan in the morning, all the start it's 10 a.m., they're at the coffee shop, it's 12 o'clock, and they've got an appointment or two, and they've done nothing that day, do you know what I mean? So I'd say, Getting structure and um, having clarity. I think we all lack clarity in this business. Being really clear on what we want to achieve. Obviously, over the year, over the six months, over the quarter, over the month, and um, and that week. But every day, if you just create nine out of ten days, you do really well in this business. Yeah, that makes you know, complete sense. And it kind of answered my final final question, which was, you know, what advice would you give to to, to agents just starting out? But that gets exactly it. Providing structure and, and and being clear on, on on what you wanted to achieve. Yeah, it's layer with so many other things, but you know you don't you have to work sixteen hour days to do well in this business. If you just if you do if you do what I just talked about for two hours every single day, five days a week, it's ten hours a week. It's you know it's forty a month. You know that adds up significantly, and that can compounds phenomenally over a year's time. So that's probably the biggest thing: it's create a structure. Don't need to. Like the skill will come, right? Just get into the habit of picking up the phone daily for a couple of hours a day and adding that data, serving that data with things like nurture. Um, and then you're going to start winning business. Cool, cool, cool. Do you want to tell us a little bit about, like, I can I can show people how nurture works, but like, how does, how does nurture fit into your business? What does it get? Does it do just from, from an agent's perspective? Because I think people get sick of hearing me talking about it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically a digital version of what I said about quarterly report. So it's a value add, but it's a it's a massive value add proposition, right? So I'll just if I have downtime, half an hour, an hour, I'll just get on my phone and just start sending out text messages. Um, and the the, the value add is is massive. That's probably the biggest difference over say a hard copy report that goes out every twelve weeks. Whereas this is digital. It's in real time. It's fast. It's why text messages that they're at with friends or at dinner or at the supermarket, they can come out and read that message straight away. It's just so accessible. So, um, yeah, that, that's been huge for us. But it's just having downtime. Says scrolling to social media. Says scroll, scrolling to social media for four hours a day. Spend an hour or two on nurture, just punching out just salts. And, you know, it'll it'll read far more for you in terms of business than a social media post. Still do that, but put an hour in your day where you do it. You know, I, I think it'll be hugely productive. I think uh, as well, the one advantage over uh, say something that's, but I, I do love the, the quarterly report physical, but with something that's uh, a text message, they can respond straight away and the, the conversation can start probably a lot smoother, if that makes yep. sense, you know, rather than, you know, waiting for the phone call from you, the text message, it can be just a quick, like, thanks for the update. Actually, can you blah, 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 you know? So the, the, 
the ability for them to respond is very frictionless. So that tips me. Yeah, absolutely. And if they don't, and that's also that they can respond, right? If they don't respond, don't be just hard to just keep seeing those messages until they say stop. Because most don't say stop because it's a value add. But also, I've sent you out there on a listing offer, and I'll, be, I'll probably send you 10, 11, 12, 30 text messages, no reply. They run and said, hey, sorry, sorry for replying. I have been getting messages. It's been hugely beneficial. We're ready to go. So, you know, keep keep pushing and, and keep sending those text messages as well. So for anyone who doesn't really know what we're talking about here, I know there's a few people who use Nurture on this call, so they've, they've heard it all before. But basically what Nurture allows um, you as an agent to do is to send out relevant sales, relevant listing information to the homeowners from your database. So what it does, and I'll just show you a quick demo here, is let's just assume this is Johnny's database. Johnny's uploaded his database into Nurture. So all of his homeowners are in there. Now, it's going to highlight all of the recent sales that have been happening relevant to the homeowners on Johnny's database. So if he clicks on 21 Newham Place in Henderson, which is a recent sale, uh, it's going to highlight everyone in his database who lives within a one kilometre radius of the sale. So Johnny doesn't need to look up who's what's sold and what's happened and who's it relevant to. It automatically highlights who it's relevant to. And you can see all of the names there and how far away they are from the sale. And so let's say Johnny wanted to message Gloria, for example, who's 222 meters from the sale and update her on what's been going on. All Johnny needs to do is just hit send and it drafts the text message automatically for him. So it'd be like, hey, Gloria, thought you might be interested to know, you know, 21 new man place. A three bedroom home nearby to you. It's just recently sold for 703. You know, and you can always say, I know you're looking to sell, but it's always nice to know what's selling around you. If, if they are thinking about selling, you might not want to add that in. But, you know, if you'd like more information on the sale, just let me know. Have a great day. You know, cheers. And boom, you hit send, and it goes directly from your phone to your home owner on the database. And so it's, it's a one on one touch point that really adds value to the homeowners because again relevant sales information so it's kind of in a nutshell how it works there's a few other bells and whistles but yeah you know, in brief that's basically how it works Did i missing anything there johnny um from, from that point of view no i just I just every time i every time i go in there it's easier so you've actually got no excuse anymore not to prospect because if you don't like picking up the phone and you don't want to do that okay, that's all right, but you need another system. You need another platform. So this provides that platform. If you're not a caller, be a texter, but you've got, you've got to be something. And I think I said to you the other day, the cost of this for the, the, the top one is five bucks a day. It's a coffee a day. Um, I don't think there's any excuses. Look, and I think and even if you're just starting out and you're a new agent, it's, uh, just to give people an idea, it's $25 every three months. And we offer a community day free trial. So you want to trial it for 30 days and not pay anything, you know, this is a great opportunity to just upload your database, have a play around for 30 days. If you don't like it, you can cancel. Otherwise, you know, it starts at 25 bucks every three months. So there's hundred bucks a year, you know, you probably spend that, uh, you know, on a Facebook ad that doesn't work. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd waste a hundred bucks doing that. So it's super, super affordable for any agent, no matter where they are at in their business. So um, I can send an email out to you, if They would like to give that a trial, but just, um, Final thoughts, what would be one takeaway, and you might have already said it, Johnny, but we'll just round this out with one final question before we get off to the cricket. What's one key takeaway you hope people take away from this conversation we had today in order, if they want to grow their business in 2024, what's something that you really want them to just take away? Maybe just summarising what we've spoken about. Um, make more calls, send more T-Techs, build more quality data, add value, look after more people for a longer period of time, and trust me when I say your business will flourish. Be it six months, be it one year, be it two years, start today because your business will flourish using these systems. Thank you so much, Johnny. Uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with Johnny, you can you know, reach out to him. Johnny's at uh, Harcourt's Green Deer in Christchurch. If they've got any questions or they're thinking about uh, moving agencies or whatever, um, yeah, I'm sure Johnny will be welcome a, welcome a call. As long as he's not in his call session, so he'll answer probably. 
Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm at that. We just told him when I'm at the crew, I've got that excuse today. So I'll take the call, especially if New Zealand are playing poorly. <laughs> awesome. Hey, thanks for everyone joining the call. Have a great weekend, um, everyone, and Johnny, have a great day at the cricket. Thanks, Ben. See you guys.